That's exactly where we want to welcome in our first guest, the man himself, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, and his lawyer, good friend of the show here, Larry Clayman. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. All right, let us say we talk about the uh, migrant caravan now that's uh, headed toward uh, our border. Well, let's let's yeah, do yeah, go to that, but let's the lawsuit let's, first. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sheriff. Let me ask you. Um, I think a lot of conservatives like myself. Uh, I had fictitious stories written like crazy about me when my new book came out. They questioned my credentials. They said they weren't real. They straight up lied ab about me. Even when I met Dick for the very first time today, he said to me, "Well, I read you don't really have a PhD." I'm like, "Yep, yeah, you've been reading the wrong stuff." So s people like me are cheering for you right now, um, and 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 hoping that you win just for the sheer principle of it. It, Sheriff, but what are the real chances, as far as you know, of winning these sorts of, uh, of suits? Gina, let me answer that well, first as a lawyer, because what you have here is have malice, it. okay? It was vicious, it was malicious. They accused uh, the sheriff, my good friend and client, of many, many heinous crimes, and you can't do that. That's called defamation per se, and when that happens, Damages are presumed, okay? So we don't even have to show that there are damages. But the large figure that we're asking for is actually small, $147 million plus, is based on punitive damages to prevent the New York Times from ever doing this kind of thing again. Right. And to send right. a message to the entire leftist fake news media that they will be held accountable for trashing, destroying people's lives, and every other evil act that they do. Right, and, and but Sheriff, I want to get from you, what's the impact uh, uh, on your life from this? I mean, some of it is very obvious from a professional standpoint, but I'm speaking more to the personal part of it, because I know it's especially hard for families. I know my family was very upset, the people around me on my staff, very upset, um, wanting to set the record straight. What's been the impact on you personally? Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Larry uh, Clayman with the uh, courage to go forward and take on this big uh, newspaper. Uh, so, Larry, I want to thank you again. Thank you. you have the guts to do this. Uh, and also, uh, after 55 years in law enforcement, 24 years as the sheriff who's been uh, elected six times, I have a reputation to be concerned of, my family also. And for this uh, newspaper to hit me like they did, and of course, uh, I, I know the danger right now because all the other media will repeat all these false allegations in every article they write. That's what but they I'm do. willing to take on this fight, not just for me, but for the president and others that have been uh, in the same boat that I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so Larry, what are your thoughts in terms of the, the realistic um, ability to win this case? Because I, I have heard about uh, other friends of mine that uh, newspapers have written uh, horrible things about it. And the problem is whenever they do settle, a lot of times the settlements are actually concealed. That's part of the actual agreement at the end. But uh, what are the chances of winning this for him? And what are the chances? I mean, we, we know that I believe it was the inquirer that was, inquirer that was successfully sued. I personally happen to know of others that my friends have sued. Um, I may or may not have one of those uh, going on myself at this moment. Um, but my question for you is, can we win it? And then what is the realistic possibility or what's it going to take for them to stop writing fake news? I mean, it's become a, a, a term of the day, right? Fake well, the, news. The newspaper is going to hide behind the First Amendment. They're going to say they have a right to lie or a right to insult uh, Sheriff Arpaio. They're going to tell you that they are protected because he's a public servant or was a public figure. Am I right, uh, Mr. Clayman? Well, yeah, they'll try that. But here's the difference here. And I've done a lot of defamation cases. I've won cases for public figures, and the sheriff is a public figure, but you can't do something maliciously or recklessly and get away with it. And you can't accuse someone of committing a crime. Here, he's being accused of all kinds of crimes, and that's the worst type of defamation. That's why I say it's called defamation per se. There's also a thing called false light in the District of Columbia where we brought the case, whereas if you hold someone out to extreme ridicule in the community, you can also be held liable. So. I would say we have an excellent chance of winning, and the New York Times is basically going to have to eat crow here, as well as eat a lot of money, we hope. We want to bring the New York Times to its financial knees. As the president says, it's a failing newspaper. So I want to bring it to the point where it can no longer do these kinds of things, and perhaps, you know, when we, maybe we'll buy the New York Times and turn it around and make it an honest newspaper. Mm. Wish hey. you luck. Wish you luck. Uh -huh. 
That would, that would sure be nice. All right, uh, let's move on to the migrant caravan. Dick, yes, you wanted to talk uh, about that. We've been talking about the migrant caravan that's headed through Central America right now on its way here. It originated in Honduras. Now it's grown to about 4,000 people. The president's warning is going to close the border and actually use military force to enforce that, uh, that border. Uh, the president tweeted, I'm watching the Democrat Party because they want open borders and existing laws made weak. Assault our, assaulting our country by Guatemalans, Hondurans, and El Salvadorans, whose leaders are doing little to stop this large flow of people from entering the Me Mexico on their way to the United States. And he followed that up by tweeting, in addition to stopping all payments to these countries, which seem to have almost no control over their population, I must, in the strongest of terms, ask Mexico to stop this onslaught. And if unable to do so, I will call up the U.S. military and close our southern border. He ended then with this. The assault on our country at our southern border, including the criminal elements and drugs pouring in, is far more important to me as president than trade or the USMCA. So hopefully Mexico will stop this onslaught at their northern border. All Democrats' fault for weak laws. Sheriff Joe, you were known well for your very innovative solutions uh, to lawbreaking, right? Um, what do you think of the president saying he would shut down the border? Well, you know, uh, G. Gordon Liddy and I in 1969 had Operation Intercept under Nixon. Uh, we ran that, and that border was sealed for two weeks, and that t told the Mexicans that we were very, very serious, straighten that one out. But in my campaign, I said we should uh, send the U.S. Army across the border and help the Mexican authorities. I did that when I was regional director many, many years ago. Why can't we do that? Also, I mentioned take away their foreign aid. If these countries do not stop this, take away their money. I think the president has just said that, too. So there's ways to solve this problem. But you have to get tough and make sure that they know we are serious. So I'm behind the president 100 percent on those issues. There's speculation, Sheriff Joe, that uh, perhaps George Soros and others of his ilk are behind paying uh, these migrants to come here because apparently there was our last guest, Chris Salcedo, said there, there were women and children or women with children, rather, paid uh, money to join the migrant caravan. I happen to look at the mi migrant caravan, at least the, the tapes I've seen of it, Sheriff, and most of them look like very able-bodied, military age, um, well-fed. Uh, very well fed uh, men, young yeah, men. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, I think that probably this was planned to be a, um, a something for the midterms, right? A, exactly. a, a, a political plot to make the president look bad right around the time of the midterms and call back to mind the separating of women and children and all that. But it doesn't look like this particular incident is working very well. And in fact, there was an edict handed down from Democrat leadership saying, don't talk about the migrants. Don't talk about illegal immigration. Sheriff Joe, you've been in politics a long time. What do you make of all of this? Yes. Uh, well, let me say this. Uh, George Soros pumped in almost $3 million to get me defeated in a general election a couple of years ago. No surprise. Unfortunately, no there are some politicians in bed with him, too. You do know that. So uh, it's a big problem. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's behind this, either directly or indirectly. Uh, so... The president's tough, got to get tough for these foreign countries. I cover those countries for four years. I know how they operate. So you have to put the fear into them, get the job done. And if they do get to Mexico through all these Central American countries, that's the last stop. Then you stop them across the border. Don't let them come across. You stop them across the border with any means, diplomatic, political, whatever force, to send the message out. And they'll listen. Yeah. Well, Larry, last question. We've only got about uh, 40 seconds, but I want to ask you, is there any legal recourse for the Americans who are putting money in on what is basically a political plot in an effort to break our laws in America and get these people to come here and cross the border? There may be, Gina. You know, it was the sheriff and I who played an instrumental role in getting Obama's amnesty for 500 million people killed in the courts in Texas, in the Fifth Circuit, and at the Supreme Court. We brought the first case in D.C. We got an Obama appointee, but we then went on to Texas, and we won. So there are things that we can do here, and I hope people will join us, and I hope people will support 
Sheriff Arpaio's lawsuit against the New York Times, because it's for everybody, the president yes. and everyone, they can go to freedomwatchusa.org, read that complaint, support us, we need the help. Because if we can take the New York Times down, or at least put a chink into its side, it will have a chilling effect on going after conservatives like you and me and others, notwithstanding the uh, heroic sheriff here. Uh, and we need to really do something. He's really the first one to push back in a major way against the New York Times. And it shows you how courageous this man is. It's why I admire him. He's why he's my friend and also my client. Oh, that's nice oh. to hear.